Hank Brill here with The Daily Rock, backstage of the House of Blues. Tonight I'm sitting with Paul from Cradle of Filth. How's it going, man? Good. You're doing all right. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Good, good. Uh, like I said before, you know, everybody's starting to come around and get better. <laughs> How's the tour been so far? It's been good, you know. It's just like, there's been, a, there's been some like hefty drives. Yeah. You know, but no, crowds have been amazing, though. Gigs have been great. Been enjoying your time in the States yet again? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen any uh, crazy fans or any craziness this time around you haven't seen before? Have your fans been growing? Cause yeah, I must admit, the, the pits this time around have been a lot more intense than last time we came. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, that's one thing I have noticed. Cool. It's like, holy shit, it's, it's really good though. Really, really good. And there's been a lot of girls getting involved as well this time as no well. No problem with that. So I was like, wow. <laughs> this time around, you guys have an album that's about to drop pretty soon here. Um, with um, the tracks from your first four albums. Can you explain what was going into this new album? Uh, well, it's an orchestral album, basically, if that's the one you mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking it's, about. It's like, we decided we wanted to do, um, as a, like, from Darkly to the next album, that, that we'll start writing at the end of the year, we decided we wanted to do something, which is a little, well, a little bit different for us, you know? Um, so we, we decided to take, like, tracks off the first four albums, and just make them orchestral pieces, basically. Mm -hmm. Like no vocals, guitars, drums, or nothing, just pure like, you know, film score, soundtrack music. And yeah, it's uh, so far, there's still gotta be choirs, gotta be recorded. But yeah, it's, I mean, all touch wood, like, and it's all down to the label at the end of the day, but yeah, hopefully it'll be released soon. Cool. I heard that like, you know, people have been comparing uh, this new album to something along the lines of like, some of the Danny Elfman would create or something along that line. Would you ever score, like, say, a uh, feature film or anything like that? Love to. Yeah? Yeah, 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 I'd love to. It'd be great. You know, but it's just like, if it happens, you know, great. Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely uh, either that or computer games. Cool. <laughs> computer games. Or like video games as well? Basically, yeah, that's what I'm Cool. Um, any genre that you would limit yourself uh, to? Long, I don't care as long as it's 18 plus. <laughs> gotcha, of course. Um, cool. Uh, speaking with you specifically, um, when you're on the road and whatnot, and traveling, how do you keep up as far as physical fitness? Because I know that you're a little bit of a martial arts enthusiast, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what have you been up to with your martial arts recently? Um, well, just like, to be honest, I haven't actually done anything with it for about the last last year because I've been in between moving and stuff, you know? Because um, I moved to uh, Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And there's a, the only reason, because there's a studio in uh, Minneapolis called uh, Winterland. Mm -hmm. They uh, sponsored me for a visa, a works visa, you know, so I'm basically there as a producer. Awesome. Which is cool. So I do that in between bands, sorry, in between cradle stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, training wise, I haven't really done anything for a while, as I say, because of like completely like shifting my life and getting, I had loads of personal stuff as well I had to sort out. So, so I mean, training was one of those things I had to be put on hold, you know. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd go to the gym a lot. I know when I'm actually back in like Minneapolis, I'm in the gym like twice a day, you know, which is good. And I definitely want to get back into fighting again because it's like so much fun. Yeah. You know, it's good. It's really, really good. But like, I have to see what happens. Cool. So people, fans in the U.S. could go to Minneapolis in the near future and get martial arts lessons from you, you think? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I used to teach. You know, um, I used to teach privately as well, but I don't particularly really want to, like, I still ain't got the time to do that, to be honest. Yeah. You know, not until I decide where I'm gonna settle down. I also say what country I decide I wanna settle down, you know, and then actually physically make somewhere my, like, route my home. Then I'll start venturing into that sort of thing. What styles of martial arts do you particularly? Well, I started off with um, Wadaroo, you know, uh, traditional. Everything's always been traditional. You know, I started off in Wanderoo and I started when I was six, you know, and I've done that for, for years. And then I went into like sport karate Wanderoo for, for a while, for loads of competitions and stuff, um, which was all right, you know. Um, but then eventually as I got older, all like, all the mechanics of it started like, everything started syncing up and I started understanding everything like really clearly. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, sport is just bollocks. <laughs> Basically to me, it's like, and yeah, once I understood all the mechanics of like traditional karate, then I, I was doing um, I do uh, another style called Yoshi Khan as well, and then I went and dabbled in like uh, Wing Chun and Seven Star Praying Madness as well. Then I learnt the Chinese power generation, and I mixed it with the Japanese hard style, 
then I started teaching the two mixed um, privately mm -hmm. and there was myself and th I think it's three other instructors and before I moved we used to teach like the local police in England it was good fun get out yeah black oh, so cradle of Phil is teaching police how to we used fight. to uh, yeah, used to, myself and three other instructors that's incredible that's very ironic as well um you ever sparred up against any other musicians who are also uh, martial arts? No, artists? not really. Well, actually, I, we used to try when, um, before I moved, I was uh, Mikey from um, oh, Moonspell, drummer from Moonspell, yeah. his Taekwondo guy. And we used to slap each other around senseless last time, really, when we used to tour together. That was good fun. Cool. That was really good fun. But no one else really, you know, no one really, I don't know, Mikey was the only one I really got on with properly, you know. Okay. As in, like on a training side of things. But yeah, we used to like, yeah, we had plenty of sparring sessions. Cool. Lastly, on the martial arts bit, what's the uh, worst injury you ever succumbed to? Luckily, touch wood, I've never actually broken anything. All those years. All those years, fight. I've never broken anything. Really? Yeah, I've I've cracked and sprained loads of stuff, but I've never physically broken anything. Noses, cheeks, jaw, nothing. Cool. Yeah. You know? Has your martial arts philosophy ever intercepted or influenced any of the Cradle of Filth or any of your other side projects? Oh, totally. You know, actually being grow after because of training um, from such a young age, you know, and it was like when I started off, like I said, I was six, and I remember down the dojo, the uh, instructor then, he hated kids. Hated kids. Oh, that's great. You know, and yeah, we used to get like, there was like zero tolerance. You know, because um, it was like pure tradition as well and really hard. You know, there was zero tolerance for, if you're adult kids, everybody got treated exactly the same. You know, and so yeah, from like a young age, I've had basically had like discipline and uh, respect literally physically beaten into me. You know, and I'm glad I went through that. You know, because that way it's turned me into like the man I am now. And everything I do, I, I've, I look at it at all exactly the same, and I, from st I make sure everything, wherever I start, it gets finished mm -hmm. as well. You know, it's the same respect for people as well. It's training, which has actually given me everything that what I live now for. And I would assume that that would influence maybe your discipline when it comes to practicing. Yeah, practicing, up. artwork, just talking to people in general. You know, I mean, I'm also, I've also got like, when it comes to like work as a work ethic, I've got like zero tolerance as well. That uh, might be because of like what I was beaten into when I was a kid. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, well, Paul, well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, man. Pleasure chatting with you. Pleasure. All right. Hank Pro with The Daily Rock, we're out.